Welcome to United by Trucks. Today, well, we're in one of you guys' favorite places, definitely one of my favorite places, Harrison's Ride Shop, Harrison's Ride and Custom in Greenville, Tennessee. And we've got some killer, killer square body content coming for you today. We're gonna be doing a shop update. We're gonna be doing a ride around on old blue collar here. We're actually about to hit the road now. Tell you a little bit more about really the, maybe even some of the hot rod history around this area and just generally have a good time hanging out with Brian and Becca and Brian's dad and, uh, yeah, we're gonna have a good time today. So y'all stay tuned. Lots of square body content coming. Y'all hang tight. <laughs> you ready to go for a ride, man? Let's go. Let's do it. These seats. Tell me about this interior real quick. Took the stock seat frame up to Shane Lyle, sewn tight interiors in Louisville. He's been doing our work for a little while now. It's more than Giles leather with, uh, I think it's a 1980 uh, NOS plaid that we grabbed online. Had him use that inside. Um, he did the leather pockets for the door panels, uh, which has also got plaid inside yeah. the pockets as well. Did the more than Giles on the visor. Yeah, he's, he's probably gonna be our guy for a while. That's awesome. He did a great job. And I really like that, uh, like we were talking about earlier, this seat is not, not like super plush. No, it's it's pretty firm, which yeah. I told him I wanted a good, hard, firm riding seat, and that's just what he did. Probably help us with our back issues on yeah. the long ride. Yeah, right? Right. Now that we're 30. Right? <laughs> yeah, now that we're 30. Well, let's go ride around this thing. Yeah. Tell me about it. So we've had a, uh, We've had blue collar on the channel before, obviously, but you've been making some some pretty good improvements to this truck. So, kind of give us a rundown on what you've been doing uh, on this thing lately. So, since the last time y'all were here, we went back and redid some stuff with the front suspension because the trying to keep this thing static drop this low all the time. It was just some some alignment things and some stuff I wasn't happy with. So, now the truck is tubular CPP upper and lower control arms. Uh, the coil springs are Magali's still run the same drop spindles and everything we have but we changed to a wheelwood disc brake kit and some drilled rotors in the front and that helped everything get back in line where it needed to be because with that much deep drop it's just it's going down the road at right around six six and a half probably total so and that's six and a six six and a half inches of drop in the front yes yeah and you know there's some things that we do to it to get it to travel to get it to live right going down the road that low that we kind of keep in the house and it just all kind of works together. I mean, we're going down there right now, and this thing ain't beating us up at all. No, nah, and it's super deep. I mean, you can tell how low this thing is. I mean, especially in the rear. I mean, you got, what, eight, nine inches of drop in the rear of this thing? It's right now going down the road at about nine. Yeah. And it'll fool you because we're running the taller diameter tires. So we've got to shove our rear end further up in the truck to get the truck down, because we're probably inch, inch and a half taller than what a lot of people run for back tires. And the same things with the front, with the 18, the diameter will fool you. And it, you know, everybody likes 20s on front, and that's fine you know, if you're into that. Yep. And we do it sometimes too, but the 18, 20's got more of a hot rod rake like we're trying to do, and it'll fool you how much drop is there until you compare where the center of the spindle is, the center yep. of that cap compared to the bottom of the rocker. And then it's like, good grief, you know, it's, <laughs> it's sitting four inches higher probably than the bottom of the truck is, and then that's when you know that it's, you know, it's had to have tubs. It's had to have a whole bunch of stuff done to the sway bar to get it back in line. It's got a lot of stuff that we try to do. Even when you look under there, you're not necessarily going to notice what all's been done to it, but it combines to make the thing livable. Yeah, obviously we, we, we work with a couple of different builders. You know, you're one of the first ones we ever worked with, and it's because you have a unique style. It's because you've got this really strong foundation in, in street rides and the old hot riding, and I think it comes a lot from a lot of where you live and where you grew up and right here in Greenville, Tennessee. So I, I love seeing this kind of influence on these square bodies because it is different. It sets you apart. It's not anything, you know, it doesn't have to be crazy and wild. It's just simple and clean and classic and it's done the right way. Tell the folks at home kind of why you why you build these trucks the way you do. The whole time I've been growing up, we had old cars. You know, it's what, when we picked up the second car in my family, that's what dad drove, mostly because it was a cheap something old to drive. You know, we had 52 Dodge pickup, we had like an El Camino, we've had K5s. He did the Datsun pickups. We, we've had all these different things, and we were always around 60 stuff, 50 stuff like that. And uh, 
you know, we went to the street rod shows. We did the NSRA shows in Knoxville all the time. We went to Shades of the Past and Pigeon Forge and all that. So we started out with my business. We were working on a little bit of everything. We've always did trucks, and we always wish the trucks were more acceptable like they are now, but it wasn't always the thing everybody did. Right. But, you know, we were a hot rod shop that also started doing some trucks. And I think it carried over to where, you know, we were doing 18s and 20s on Impalas. We were doing 18s and 20s on, you know, muscle cars and street rods and stuff. And then it kind of just carried over into the truck because myself, personally, I don't care for things that are level. Yep. I like it with a little rake. I like it to look like it's got a little more tire in the back. We've actually got a percentage proportion thing. It's like a formula that I do. That's how we selected and arrived at the tire sizes we ride. Everybody that looks at our stuff, you know, you see the comments. Why don't you run 20s on the front? <laughs> you know, why don't you do this? Why don't you do that? Well, that, that's cool. That's why they make all different sizes. That's exactly right. My answer to that is if I did the 20s, it'd look like you built it. That's right. And sometimes that's not a bad thing because they build good stuff too. Yep. But the trucks look like they come from our place. And, you know, we had a delivery guy that comes around the shop a couple times a week, and he's been hitting some local shows. He moved here from, from off here, like a couple states away. Sure. He said, I'm getting to where when I go to these shows around here, he goes, I can spot a truck, and I know if I walk up, it's going to have your logo in the yep. corner of that windshield. And I'm like, then that's where we need to yeah, be. Yeah, I'm doing my job. I'm doing it right. And, you know, I've got some, some hot rod mentors in the industry, and, the, you know, they, they know what we're trying to accomplish. And, you know, we run into things. We talk and communicate about stuff. And, you know, every one of them's like, you got a style going that looks like the way you need it to look. Yep. You don't deviate from it. You know, you, you stick with that. And that's, that's where we're at with it. You know, I'm not not really looking for a big change we've got a lot of time tied up in making a truck live like this going down yeah. the road yeah and I, I think you uh even in some of our other, other videos you know you you kind of coined that phrase living in the notch or living right going down the road static um with nothing crazy i mean we're not even talking coilovers we're not talking bags we're talking you know your simple simple you know drop components but putting that harrison rod and custom touch on it and making it where it rides really really good you know it, it's something that we've we've continued to see you know even from our videos you start to see more of these folks coming to you saying hey i want a truck that looks like that you know we're going to talk about hoss here in a minute which is just a super low mile really 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 cool square body that you put your touch on and it's it's cool to see more and more trucks that you've been able to put your you know your imprint on and put your you know your touches on and i think it's just i think it's super cool because these trucks you know, the way you put them together, you can drive them down the road, you can drive them as far as you want to go, and they're going to be reliable, and they're going to look good doing it. And I, I think there's something something so good about something simple like this, even though you've got a lot of R&D and a lot of time in making sure they can do those things and be reliable and ride good and go far. Well, and it's like right now, you know, viewers are watching this video yep. they're in the truck with us essentially that's right has anybody heard a tire rub <laughs> has anybody heard anything hit the ground you know it's the truck's not vibrating we just did two speed breakers coming into this complex to make pictures here and nothing hits nothing you know yeah i just did about a full lock steer right there with nothing rubbing and you know like i said my way is not the only way to do something absolutely else, but it's yeah. a way yep and, and it's a way that's working that's what I like. And I just, I kind of like the, I kind of like the street rod muscle car flavor. And I'm kind of, I guess, big on tradition and hot rod tradition and, and how things get there. It's like, I think you can kind of plot your own way through things, but still respect the tradition of the people that got it to here. Cause Absolutely. I mean, there's, you say, you know, we've got a lot of R and D development, you know, going with getting a truck to go down the road like this. That's a scratch compared to all the stuff the guys before us. Did. Yeah, it's true. And, you know, some people probably don't care about the history side of things. I, you know, I choose. Well, you know, I do. <laughs> well, I mean, That's all we've been talking about for the last 24 hours. Yeah, me too. But, uh, you know, I choose to dig into it and read about it and, and find out about the guys that were making stuff because it didn't exist. I've got some things along the way that I've seen or I said, you know, I like this about that, but I think I'd do it this way or I'm, I like the way this worked out, but I might use that finish or whatever on this instead. And it's just, you know, I can remember seeing Boyd Coddington stuff. Yeah. And I got to meet Boyd back in the day. And, and when you were a kid, when I was like 15, 16 years yeah. old, he was kind to me. He was good to me when I met him and that made an impression. And I'm like, you know what? That just goes to show you no matter how big you get, yep. what, what you got going on. Or what the perception is on TV. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Because 
some would argue that Boyd got a got the got a raw end of the deal on some of that. Yeah, I'll and, I'll not let anybody say that in front of me because yeah. that man was kind to me when nobody would have knew how he treated a hillbilly kid from Tennessee. Yeah, because y'all were in a private setting. Yeah, nobody was around. You know, I told him I said I'm gonna try to do what you guys do on these days, and he goes, "Well, you just keep at it, kid. You can get there." And, yeah. Yeah, you know, I'll, I'll never forget that. And I, I had a conversation with his son several years back after he'd passed away. And I said, you know, your dad was a good dude, you know. Yep. But here again, a Boyd car looked like a Boyd car. That's right. Alloway stuff looks like an Alloway car. Alan Johnson looks like an Alan Johnson build, you know. And your stuff looks like a Harrison build. I hope it does. <laughs> it does that's to where, me. That's where we're trying to get <laughs> that's to. That's why we're but, here. <laughs> but, you know, we, we've got some good things in the works. we got a build. We're going to be going to SEMA in 22. And uh, actually are negotiating with another company about a build. When we get back to the shop, we're going to talk about a couple of trucks that mm -hmm. we can talk about publicly. And we're going to talk about this special project a little bit without, you know, without really going into too much without, detail. Without getting too deep. But... People need to stay tuned to UBT because the details will be unfolding throughout 2022 on this the, this particular special project. Got a lot of products already in. Got a lot of good companies wanting to work with us on that build already. Found a super good donor cab for that. Yep. You know, we're kind of excited about getting on it. We got a frame being built right now by a guy that does street rod frames. And that's a surprise, right? Yep. It's a big surprise. Um, but I can't wait to see how it applies in our, you know, in our community, in the truck community. Well, for the stance type stuff we're wanting to do, we've just about maxed the limits of stock frame stuff and it lives static going down the road where yep. you're going to be without it being obnoxious. This frame's going to gain us several more inches of room to ride right move you know a little lower toward the stance being even a little closer to the ground and still live right yeah. so it's kind of been engineered from the ground up to go down the road that way versus starting with one of these stock trucks and backtracking i'm excited about it's it it's gonna be a blast well let's jump out and take some pictures of this truck we'll drop let's them in it. here too on the video and then we're gonna head back to the shop and tell these folks a little bit more about what we're talking we about we might go for riding a different hot rod oh oh i'm all over that <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. He died. He was yeah. a car guy. Yeah. She yeah, I mean, that, that garage lets you know that. He had a 58 Impala, 55 Chevy, and a 32 Ford, all black. And she also has the 66 F-150 her daddy bought new sitting in that garage right there, right Dang. now. Dang, look at that thing, man. Yeah, I see the, the one up behind it yep. now. That's a sweet little spot. Look at that donkey. <laughs> yeah, that sucker wakes us up about two nights a week. <laughs> my little girl wants one so bad, and ironically, so or, or surprisingly, so does my wife. Wow. Who didn't grow up in any area like this. Get us. Oh, is this you right here? Yeah. I thought when we rode by, that looks just like your truck. I had no idea this was you. But uh, what a sweet little spot. Which one? Big one. Oh, of course, the one with all the greasy Thumb prints on it. On. Yeah. That worked. And the. Uh... Right, guys, uh, we're going to do something a little different here and bring y'all uh, maybe some, some, not some truck content just for a minute. Brian's. As you guys know, has been into building all sorts of stuff. So we're gonna hop in uh, his real hot rod and uh, head over to uh, head back to the shop. But we're in his little basement now, and we're gonna show you something cool here in just a second. Yeah, I imagine it's pretty loud in there. So tell me real quick what this thing is. So small block Chevy. It's got a Saginaw four speed. It's like 12, 12 and a half to one. Z28 302 heads, like 69Z. Great big cam, roller rockers. What year car? 64 Super Sport Nova. Mmm. What's the suspension set up on it? Stock Nova front end, but with some stuff we do yeah. to get it down like that. It's still leaf in the back, but we did some stuff to the leaf system and, yeah. and the way the rear end's mounted up to get it down. But I love it's the same color as your truck. Real close. Oh, real close. Real close. Like dark navy. And I mean, it's a real SS. That's that's a pretty rare piece for '64. So didn't want to cut it up too much. Yeah, it can still you. go back stock, but it smells good though, don't <laughs> it? Smells it? great. <laughs> good. Feels good. I can feel it. You ready to go for a ride this Yeah, we gonna go. Let's do it.
gonna try this at home. You're gonna get a comment about that. Yeah. <laughs> Did you see the tag? I didn't even look. I was looking at you and trying to make sure we was in the lane. It's That's, fun uh, when I was talking. Oh, it definitely did. And I was like, well, wait a minute. When you get on it again, I'll I'll uh, get the tag. Man, what an awesome day. I'm having a blast. Thank you. 